Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I missed out on the Tai Chi as well, I have to admit. It's something I've, I myself am looking forward to. Hope I could make it. Say that again? How many other ones books on? I'm not coming up here more. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I love the Bronx, but it's out here. Um, so, before we go into this, let me tell you a little bit about who I am, and then you guys tell me a little bit about who you are. Uh, I feel like there are some familiar faces, maybe one or two people that I've met in the past. Um, I've come up to here in Hospitals for about three years now, and really enjoy working with people of color in the CUNY system, because I myself am a CUNY graduate. 1990, uh, yeah, from City College. Uh, yeah. I have children now, three boys, two cats, two guinea pigs, a dog, a husband, and I live in Brooklyn. So that's why I'm not coming up here anymore. <laughs> I'm only sleeping. And today I have full mommy duty. My background is, yeah, uh, my background is I graduated from City College, actually started at Queens College, transferred to City College because of a horrible thing called spades, and wrote uh, um, hearts, if you play cards, don't do it. That thing, and then <laughs> transfer, and then I did. Um, I then went into corporate America, and I worked as a trainer for 15 years. Uh, actually, I'm going to jump backwards. Before I went to college, I was in the military for eight years as a reservist. I jumped forward. I uh, did my 15 years of corporate America and decided I wanted to be a more hands-on mother because I suck at multitasking. And weekend mommy wasn't working for me. And so I said I had to make a decision. So I decided to come back to my love, which is teaching and training, really, um, and then come back to the population that I really felt uh, gave me the most love, which is the CUNY school system. So that's me. Real quick, show of hands, how many seniors, graduating seniors, do we have? Congratulations in advance, right? Um, so four seniors, is that what I saw? You, you, who else? Oh, oh, okay, we got seniors, and congratulations. Uh, where are we going at, what are we, associates, bachelors, what's the, associates and bachelors, okay, so what's next? Nice, four. Bio. too. Low-key engineer. We need as many engineers of color as we can get. Gentlemen, friends. Stop trying, to, stop trying to gas me up. You weren't going to City College before I said it. Okay. Okay, what do you want to do with this? Okay. Probably teach, maybe. So we're still not sure. We're just throwing adjectives to, to test us. Messing with you. Over here, the, the seniors, where, where are we going? You're graduating, where are you going? I'm not really sure, but I have a big college game in my third night. And in New York, I'm Okay. 
many of you are taking advantage of the Excelsior Scholarship Program? You don't qualify? The free CUNY school, the free tuition of CUNY. So, does anybody else not know about the Excelsior? Okay, so who is this? Tell me your name. Elisa. You guys are going to reach out to Alicia, Elisa, Elisa, and talk about the Excelsior College. Tuition thing, right? So you're gonna ask the least. I know about it. I know what it is. I know that it exists. I don't know the details, but essentially. So basically, finishing up your degree free of charge. What are all the things that would qualify you? Let's start with the positives, and then the things that may be the little hiccups, and if there are any changes in the pipeline for those of you that are planning to go to other CUNY colleges. Fair enough? Excelsior, is that the right name for it? Yes. Excelsior College. Okay, Excelsior Scholarship. That's all I know. They didn't have it when I was in school, I'm mad. As you can tell, I'm still mad about it. Because <laughs> I'm still paying. But you're paying here in Joy. We'll see if I'm still in New York. It's, it's a lot out here. Was, did I see a hand over here on the side as well? Conversation, no? So, gentlemen with the and the ear, thing. Where are you going? What are you doing for? What's your degree? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm in the more part. Um, I I don't know where intelligence is a bedrock of, right? So underlying all of that was what is my emotional space? How comfortable am I working amongst strangers and just walking up to you and saying, hi, my name is Rabiat, who are you? Nice to meet you and great handshake. Very nice, okay, let's try that. There you go, see? That's a, that, all of those are elements of emotional intelligence. That thing that says, I'm not just math smart, right? I'm not just English smart, but also I am energetically smart. It doesn't matter whether or not we know each other, but meeting you for the first time, I take stock, who I see, what do I see in her eyes, and I see or smiles, right? Just smiles, you don't have to show teeth, just, how are you? Keep it moving. Tell me your name again. Ooh, Estrella. Did I say it right? Okay, what were you saying? So here's a question, why? Here's my question to you. If that person is already working at a negative, why would you push them further back? Oh, I'm not pushing them further back. I, I just don't like that. Like, I'm but still, you haven't but reached I'm out your hand. Hi. Hey. No, but that, you said but you would. No, but I'm still going to be kind of skeptical. If, do I actually want to be near this person? OK, so here's the flip side of that, right? The smart <laughs> person. How are you, girl? What's up? What's up? What's good? Oh, I love the look. Yep. Yeah. And I noticed the shoes. What's good, right? So that person's coming on real strong. And they're like over here. And they're giving you all the compliments and all the things. And they're pulling you into conversation. But you don't really got the hand in your pocket. Right? 
So this person has been really nice to you, but emotionally, all they've done is overwhelm you. So that's the other side of it. And that's, what I, that's why I was pressure testing to say, yes, that person who's stuck up for a lot of people, especially in New York, that's the, I'm shy, so I'm gonna be cool. <laughs> but please don't talk to me, please don't see me, oh my God. So I'm a brace, right? Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's that thing of, and if you're a guy, it's like, yeah. right? But you haven't really said anything. So the person's like, well, clearly this person don't want to be messed with, so I'm going to keep on walking. And then you have the other person on the other side who's blah, 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 blah. And then you realize, oh, you're the kind of person, as the old people say, a dog that will bring a bone or that will bring a story will take your story and go tell somebody else. All of that, so all these old folks' wives' tales, all of the old wives' tales, the folk knowledge that we have, all of that are forms of emotional intelligence. Right? And so even the person who's giving you attitude, I'm willing to give them 30 seconds maybe even three minutes, because I'm going to assume that they are actually shy. I'm gonna give them the New York City allowance, right? Because we know, New York City. Quick story, I went to Baltimore in October. It's beautiful weather. I had to take the train from the Baltimore Penn Station to New York City Penn Station. When I tell y'all, it was a two hour, tra three hour train ride, but it was like I had gone from 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 12 o'clock midnight when I got to New York City. I literally got on the train, sunshine, birds, Baltimore train station is beautiful. Got out in New York City, it was gray. And people was like, oh. I got the train, I had my bags, and this guy's looking at me, and I'm looking at him like, what? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still hood. I can, I, you know, I'm still Brooklyn. <laughs> so I'm literally crossing 34th Street, and in five steps, I go from two, <laughs> right? You gotta do what you gotta do. But all of that is emotional intelligence. So I'm gonna give that person that I see the three minutes of, 30 seconds if you seem real weird, but three minutes of, you know, you might have left Baltimore where it was really beautiful, and now you're in New York City and you're mad about it, because I was mad about it. I can't even lie, I was happy to be home. I've been gone for a week. You miss your people. But New York City, I literally felt myself going into like, say something, what? <laughs> Queen Latifah was all day. Like, quick, right? Remember? Remember back in the day? Wait, have I just dated myself? Do y'all know who Queen Latifah yeah. is? Yeah. Do you know Queen Latifah from the yeah. Respect? Yeah. Okay, from the UNITY? Yeah. The movie that she made? Oh my goodness. Before the movie. Wait, Before the movie. I'm older than that. Set it off as the movie. I know, but you're talking about you and that's why. Yes, but that is before. So, yeah, what? That's what I'm talking about. Before they even say, Wait. Way before. Yes, okay, now you got me. So that, I was, I had to turn into that. That is a form of emotional intelligence. That's what I'm saying to you, right? That the ability to flex into the situation that you're in, <laughs> to go from Baltimore sunshine, hi, how are you? Good morning. Yes. Oh, I love that. It looks so good on you. Where'd you go? I'm going back to Brooklyn. And you have a vacation. Yeah. You got to pay attention. I got nothing. Tell me your name. Jose. Did he just insult my Brooklyn -ness? I think he insulted me. Like, you're trying to say because I'm from New York, from Brooklyn? I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. I believe in the frequency and he's assigned to be gone. Oh, see, you're going deep, Jose. They ain't ready for us. They ain't ready for us. Yep, that's a whole nother thing. So the frequency that the frequency that Jose is, is um, bringing up is the energetic wavelength between human beings, right? And depending on how high or low your frequency is on any given day, also is part of the 
attitude that the person is projecting. You know what I'm saying? For example, uh, I blame all uh, right. Mm -hmm. So when I use it, the key mind, it's mm -hmm. a very sad form. Yeah. So you can work work out the emotion. There's a negative, you can play it, work around. Yeah. They express yourself. That's why the music is used to express and change the emotion of the message. Precisely. Right? Precisely. So, so that's the person's energy in that moment. What we're talking about is going to be energy in the course of your day as you work with your colleagues here at school, your um, administrators, and then your jobs. Because I know most of you have at least one or two jobs that you do when you leave school. Your emotional intelligence is your bandwidth to go between each of those and understand who you are in each interaction, right? So, Today we're going to understand the definition and the components of it. We're going to assess our <coughs> strengths in it. Talk about what those components look like in our strengths and opportunities to grow. And then explore how we can manage it, especially for New York City, when it got you want to punch somebody in the throat. Because I know what it is. Right? Tell me your name first. Annie? Okay. Normally, I'm going to say they're very polite. Okay. And I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I just say the baby, and we say the baby, and we say, have a good night. And I say, have a good night. And you just bring out of me. Then stop being a little. I'm the mom. Look at the kids, how nice they are, and look at the mother. Right. Have a good night. But it's not like, oh, I don't want to say it. Just because you're tired. Right? Just because you're tired, not because you don't love your kids. Right. Right. And for a, for a working parent, that's even harder. That's an everyday reminder, which is actually interesting if you bring that up. Part of the reason why I got into this, because once I left corporate America and I started to pay more attention to interacting with my three sons, who at that time were seven, six, and Four, no, seven, six, and three. You can imagine, I'm like white. And I'm literally learning who these people are and understanding my capacity to parent. So, this is the textbook uh, definition of emotional intelligence the ability to perceive emotions, right? When I see this person, when I'm standing next to them, I feel they're energetic to access and generate emotions within myself to assist my thought process, i.e., how am I feeling? Am I pissed off, tired, hungry? And what is that creating for me then? And how much is that reducing my own energy? Um, to understand emotions and the emotional knowledge, a line that I think is missing here is the breadth of emotions. So in New York, we talk about being pissed. We don't talk about being irritated or annoyed or flabbergasted, all those things, all those things are like 0, 10, 20, 30, and then you got pissed. I'm not even talking about punch your throat pissed. I'm just talking about New York City. Oh, you got tight. Okay, tight. Yeah. Tight. So where, where, where's tight on the spectrum? Tight is like past 10. Past 10. You're about to cut somebody's throat. Okay. So, you went from. Wow. Spectrum. Before I get to be in tight. Go ahead, tell me your name. 
the need. So it's not that controlling what you can control, and you know, be able to control what you can control and understand that you cannot control. <coughs> yes, and so before you control it, you have to understand what it is, right? So what gets you to tight versus what gets you just irritated? Do you see what I'm saying? So like. What would what would like be a minor irritation in your day? Well, Brian, drink yours. Give me one second. Um, I guess when people are very like impolite in the in the train. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's a little like, thing, I'm but like, you're like, ugh, really? Do we yeah, have to do this? Yeah, like, you start arguing. I'm like, it's just you just starting the day. I don't want to right. hear it. Right. Come on. Right. So you're not all the way pissed, but you're yeah. like, Ugh. Yeah. So that language, that awareness, what does that feel like, right? And where is that on a scale of one to ten? Is it a two or is it a five? Like a four. A four. Okay. Yeah. I realized when it was that it was time for me to do corporate when that became a seven. Being on the train, I literally drove up here today, which is why I'm not coming back again. <laughs> and took the train about two weeks ago. And literally, you know, you got backpacks, bags. And everyone's reaching for the pole, and so this person is doing this. This other person is standing up, but and I'm standing here, and this person here is pissed off because this person is too close. And I'm like, we're all sorry. <laughs> really? Does the two inches do they? Does the, if her face isn't in your face, just zone out. But you can see. You can literally see the energy building between them, where they're kind of giving each other the, uh, the tension. And just like, we're all complaining about a 275 inch of pole. That, that's it. Come on. Right? Again, where does that put you on the scale of 1 to 10? If you think it through, what is the real anger that you have? What's the real irritation level that you have? Right? And then we get to reflect what? Reflectively regulating the emotion. So once you, what can I control in this situation? This person is too close, uh, bumping with their bag, whatever. How can I zone myself out so that I'm not engaging in the fight for a pole? And I, right, really that's what they were doing, right? Yeah. For all of 30 minutes. Because the train ride in New York City, okay, maybe an hour. But you're fighting for a piece of pulp. But once you can regulate your emotion, and you can see to yourself, oh, I've walked away from that five situation in my case, and I brought myself down to a two. Now, intellectually, it's a little bit of brag, but yeah, I'm a little bit smarter. Really. Once I can talk myself down, from an irritating situation to a like a fly on my hand, then I have grown myself intellectually just that little bit more. And that cumulatively, day over day, means that I'm not taking high blood pressure medication because I have no intention of doing that before I die. Y'all don't know, I'm closer to 50 than I am not. So, Jose. Yes. trying to take me a whole nother place, man. Energetics. No, I hear what you're saying. I'm saying, I'm going to say people. Maybe it's not normal. It's not a normal behavior. So I can be trying to say, okay, why you react or overreacting? It's not necessary. So if you can say it's not normal reaction. So how do you differentiate when the people are sick versus the people are healthy? Turn on, turn on your New York City, your New York City uh, spidey senses. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm sounding funny, but I'm not being funny. I'm serious when I say, if you think about the many people who are in New York City in different cultures, mental illness shows up in all those cultures in different ways. It's not until the person has a full-on schism or a true visible break that you can tell this person isn't right, and not just hopped up, drugged up, drugged out, drunk, or just spazzing. Just because they've been pissed for days now, 
and you stepped on their toe, and so now you're getting the brunt of all their anger. That's not mental illness. I mean, yes, it is, but technically that person is just really, really tired of life. It's subjective. It's what? Subjective. Subjective? I would, again, I think. So you, we, we judge the way I assume our brains are not. And maybe these energies transfer to our mind, and we change our cell mind, right? Yes. Because you Go ahead. say, you, you argue that, no, you define that emotion is transfer of energy, right? That energy can come No, out. emotion is not a transfer of energy. Oh. Emotion is your energy. The projection of it, that is the transfer. Oh. That person's ability to pick it up mm -hmm. is the transfer. Your question, though, was about mental health. And what I, my response is, because of the world that we live in today, there are so many shades of gray, and it culturally looks so different that you can't necessarily say this person is not just pissed off versus has a real mental illness. Issue. Does that make sense? So, before we move on, I want you guys, because this is the textbook when this um, intelligence was first defined in 97, this is their definition. I want you guys to look it up on your phones and tell me what you come up with as the definition for emotional intelligence today. Not the components, just the definition. state. Understand what this French there? Again, it's not about 
my judgment of that person. It's not about me saying, oh, you this, that, and third, you coming at me, and da 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 da. No, it's me saying, I'm not going to give more fuel to your fire because I am going to dial it down. Yes, and. There's an element of judgment in that. I'm going to be the bigger person. Yeah, we don't know that. All we know is this person. All I know is that this person is having a bad day and not gonna, I'm not going to pick it up. They're putting it down and I'm not picking it up. Whatever you have is your mind. Whatever you have is yours. Sometimes they don't always work like that, but sometimes you can try to avoid the situation the person is just. Right. They keep coming. They keep coming. They keep coming. And at a certain point, right, you have to stand your ground. Yes. However, for the most part, if you continue to walk slow, away, keeping your voice firm, not trembling like, oh my God, I really don't think we have to have a fight about this, but instead saying, I understand you're upset. I get you. You like All right. No problem. I see you. I hear you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 I get you, I get you, right, right. At no point, I'm not backing down. This is me saying, I'm watching you, you're watching me. You're coming with all of this, and instead I'm firmly giving you, just like a child having a tantrum. Come on, we're going to do this. Okay, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get up? Come on. Like a dog, have a pit bull. Y'all ever try to move a pit bull that doesn't want to be moved? <laughs> Let's just say, that's my workout. <laughs> because she's the only girl in the house, and I'm the only woman in the house, and she thinks that, you know, oh, she got me. And I'm like, girl, there are places in the world where I can sell you food. <laughs> 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 I'm not being racist, I'm dead serious, because she's frolic. <laughs> but when she's having a moment, the same way I would talk to my three year old son, it's all right, I know, okay, come on, that's right, uh huh, but yes, yes. Yes, 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 I hear you, yes, yes. But if you, but there's a line, right? There's a line, right? There's a line, right? It is awkward, but at what point does that line get crossed? And then you're like, right? You completely eliminate the threat. But again, this is, it's literally de-escalation 101. Emotional intelligence is a form of de-escalation. It's, it's just saying, I'm not engaging anymore. Tell me your name. Joshua. Thank you very much, Joshua. Great, great hand off. I appreciate you for looking out. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, so, you were, you were going to say something else? Yeah, I just, we was just touching on the topics in my own spiritual religions class. So, we was just jotting my memory. I felt like my profession was true. Thank you very much. So, give us a summation, a quick synopsis of what you remember from. An interpersonal communication and how that would link into emotional intelligence. Confident communication says the exact same thing. 
It says, I'm able to communicate because I'm not just speaking out, but I'm listening. I'm going silent, which is the same exact letters as listen. I'm going silent to at least hear your rant. Because most times when people are ranting, all they want is five minutes of attention. Just like a kid. Okay, baby. Uh-huh, you're right. You're tired, you're hungry, your feet hurt, da 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 All you're trying to do is just get out the frustrations of the day. If I'm quiet enough, I can let you get all that out and go, I hear you. That's, it's really hard. That's it. I'm not buying into it. I'm not co-signing it. I'm not even saying that it's my, my issue to deal with. But I am saying, your baby <coughs> telling me sounds like a real hard day. I talk about everything with my team and all that drama from high school when she comes home. Six years old? I'll be a girl, you always got something you can tell me when you come from school. Oh, yeah, but the thing is that when, when you're a teenager, like, everything is like, you. Yeah, but it, it wasn't like that when I was in school. Stop it! Assessment of what I'm feeling, not the story behind it. 